Okay, I want to introduce now uh, G. Parthasarthi. He was High Commissioner of India to Pakistan, involved in the previous instance when an Indian Air Force pilot was in uh, Pakistani custody. This is Saurabh Nachiketa during the Kargil War. Explain what happened then, what are the parallels, what are the similarities, dissimilarities this time? Well, uh, uh, Nachiketa was flying a MiG-23. Uh, he was shot down when uh, near Kargil uh, and then uh, parachuted and tried to escape but got caught. Uh, he was taken and imprisoned and we were informed. But uh, the important point is that we made it very clear, and especially I did in dis subsequent discussions, that he has to be treated with due courtesy uh, and uh, uh, honor as a prisoner of war. Uh, around the middle of uh, the conflict, Nawaz Sharif announced that he was releasing him. And he wanted the Indian ambassador to go and uh, meet him and take him. Uh, I learned that they were trying to expose him to the media and ridicule India. I refused. I insisted that he should be treated according to uh, the uh, international conventions and that he should, the International Committee of the Red Cross should have access to him. And when they t spoke about his release, I said, you can't hand him over directly to him, to us. You have to hand him over to us through the International Committee of the Red Cross. So the, uh, they hemmed and hawed because I denied them the pleasure of uh, propaganda in, uh, in uh, releasing him before the media. And uh, then um, the, he, the ICRC brought him in the evening. Uh, he slept the night with us in Islamabad and next morning put him inside. So you are expecting that this uh, Indian Air Force pilot will be released as well? I expect that, yes, you see, Nawaz was different from Imran. In what way? In the sense, Nawaz had just spoken with Vajpayee and he felt a guilt, sense of guilt about what had happened and he didn't want to himself get a bad name, so he made the effort. I'm not sure these people will do it, but I think right from the beginning, we should insist on access to the International Committee of the Red Cross and that uh, he should be treated according to the Geneva Convention. Uh, former Chief of the Indian Air Force, Air Chief Marshal Tipnis now joins us. He uh, on this broadcast, Air Chief Marshal, welcome. This has uh, been a 48-hour period where the Indian Air Force has seen uh, all the action. Thank you. We went in and targeted Pakistani uh, terror camps deep inside Pakistan. That was a mission well done. Now we've had one MiG-21 brought down. We also brought down a Pakistani F-16. Where do you think, where, we, uh, where are we right now, according to you? Where do you think we are going, sir? Well, I think when we started the, the air action early last uh, yesterday, uh, I'm sure the planners were well aware that there's every possibility of a, uh, a mission going awry. And uh, maybe an aircraft either gets shot down or has an accident. And uh, there may be the possibility of a pilot ejecting into Pakistan-occupied uh, Kashmir or even Pakistan territory. And I'm sure all precautions were taken. The pilots are well aware, uh, aware of the risks that were being taken. And <clears throat> uh, despite all that, I think the mission of yesterday was absolutely successful, I think, beyond our uh, wildest uh, expectations, because everything went as clockwork and as expected. <clears throat> uh, I would just like to correct one uh, little uh, observation of... Um, Ambassador Parthasarthi, that, you know, Nichiketa was not shot down. Nichiketa had to eject because his engine flamed out spontaneously because of, you know, the fumes from the rockets. So it's a small thing, but it's not enemy action due to which he came down. Now, here also, I don't know what is the reason for uh, the wing commander having been shot down, Abhi. Uh, whatever it is, we'll come to know. But I'm sure... I mean, what is actually very heartening to see is, uh, I mean, it was, of course, expected that, you know, when we took this action yesterday, uh, even before the action started, all our air defenses would have been alert because that is a prerequisite. You know, the escalation in aerial warfare need not necessarily be uh, uh, incremental. It can go, you know, from the lowest degree to the highest. 
So we have to be prepared for it. That's exactly what we did even before the start of the air action during the Kargil operations. Now, when we have taken this uh, air defense um, uh, precautions, yesterday's mission was actually successful. And I'm sure, um, you know, the chief, my, uh, the, 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 the president chief was totally aware. And of course, the air officer commanding in chief, Western Air Command, was absolutely certain that there would be some aerial reaction. One, because uh, certainly the Pakistani uh, air defense had been caught on the wrong foot. They had not been able to react uh, as they would have liked to react. And they had to now prove to uh, their population that they are as capable as we are. And therefore, at least in my, uh, my assessment, my gut feeling was that Pakistan will retaliate through the air. At least they will show a strength of their presence in the air. And that is exactly what we did. No, but can, uh, I, can I ask you, Air Chief Marshal, is, place, that, you know, to try and contrast the two military maneuvers yeah. in, in Air Force terms? Because yes. my understanding from the outside is, given how far deep we went into Pakistan, given the fact that we came back unscathed, that's a far more successful Air Force maneuver in comparison with the very shallow ingress that Pakistan made on the line of control, quickly having to go back and one F-16 brought down by the Indian Air Force. Compare the two military maneuvers, sir. I think it is important that, you know, we are not needlessly euphoric on the success of our mission. Yes, certainly we had the drop on them. The conditions were in our favor. We operated by darkness. We made full use of the uh, mountainous terrain and uh, we caught them unawares. Our routing was certainly in such a way that uh, our approaches couldn't be seen. Now over here, one of the things that Pakistan uh, realized that, you know, when they showed themselves, I don't think they had any specific target on ground. It was more a strength of their presence. And therefore, I mean, the, the, the creditable thing for us over here is that we picked them up apparently on their side of the line of control. Now, I don't have the details, but I'm assuming that this is what actually happened. And we were fast enough for this interceptor, the MiG-21, Wing Commander uh, Abhi, Abhi Sheikh or Abhijit, I'm not too sure of the full name. And they took action like professional air defense pilots. I'm sure he was not uh, alone. Uh, generally, we always go as a buddy system that you have at least uh, one wingman. And apparently from the reports that we have received, the Pakistani force was far larger. And, you know, to have taken, you know, the risk of uh, approaching them and nullifying the attack, we, uh, we certainly uh, proved successful as per the reports that come that a Pakistani F-16 was down. And I think in a way it was a mismatch. Of course, the... the uh, weaponry, the radar that is on the this modified MiG-21, updated my MiG-21, was as good as the F-16. But in terms of maneuvering uh, and the range that is available to the MiG-16 uh, was superior to that of the MiG-21. Despite this uh, disadvantage, the MiG-21 got the drop on him and, and I hope it is true. Because I hope we are not telling, uh, uh, making fibs or telling something which of which we are not certain because it is important that India maintains its credibility. Credibility is something that Pakistan surrendered, you know, when this action started. And it is important that if there is a drawback, if there is a mishap, if, if uh, we fail to do it, you know, to, to perfection, then we must own it and say this is exactly what happened. And well, we lost one, we got one. And I would say the score is still in our favor as yes. an aerial action. As well far as aerial Force, action is concerned, the score you feel perfect still in and our favour. They are on 24-7. I want to get in another voice as well. Air Chief Marshal Fali Major now joins. Please, I don't think I followed Air, your last transmission. Air Chief Marshal Tipnis is now joined by another former Air Chief, Air Chief Marshal Fali Major. Uh, Air Chief Marshal Tipnis saying, uh, Air Chief Marshal Major, that the score still in India's favour that we got an F-16, we lost one MiG-21, but look at the net score of 48 hours, the Indian Air Force still well with its nose in front. What are you making of all that we've seen through the day today, Air Chief Marshal Major? Hi. Uh, 
Uh, Rahul, all that has panned out so far, starting from early morning yesterday till now, is on expected lines. And as I had mentioned to you earlier, that the time when this uh, strike was launched across in Pakistan, uh, all that is happening today must have been factored in well in advance, planned, and ready for such action. And I heard uh, a tipness sir just mention that uh, we are one, one up still, given the fact the damage we crossed across, we caused across the line. And uh, I'm sure that all through, till such time, this uh, little encounter lasts, we'll be one ahead of them all through the game. Marshal Tipnis, with all the wealth of experience you have at your disposal, what do you believe happens next in this battle between uh, the Indian Army, the Indian Air Force and the Pakistani Army and Air Force? Sir? Well, uh, certainly there's preparedness not only in the air, but also on the ground, all around. And I'm sure even the Navy is on a state of alert. That's the natural uh, action to be taken by the nation. But I do believe that Pakistan will think twice before doing anything on the ground. And my gut feeling is, again, it's a gut feeling, uh, that I don't think we will start anything on the ground. Our intention is not to escalate the issue, but to make sure that we nullify these terrorists who are actually uh, perpetrating acts of war against us in the guise of terrorism. It, these are acts of war and may, make no mistake about that. And our, as we said over here, it's a non-military action. It's a non-military uh, uh, preemptive action to prevent these terrorist groups from continuing with what they are doing. Now, the Prime Minister has, uh, of Pakistan has invited India for talks, but I don't think I'm not a diplomat, but I would certainly say that unless we get assurance that they are taking positive action and give us uh, enough evidence that they are moving against them, they are removing them, they are destroying their camps, and every, every terrorist group is branded as outlawed by the Pakistanis, and they will do every effort to destroy them, dismantle their organizations. We must have that proof. Otherwise, you know, the attacks that we did yesterday would have been futile. And again, we are back to square one. We have said that it is our intent. It is not a military action that we have taken. But it is a non-military preemptive attack against these terrorists. And I think this is what will hold good. And therefore, I don't believe that we will be the initiators on a ground attack or on any ground incursion at this stage. And I don't think Pakistan would be foolish enough to move in that direction. So I believe for the first time that instead of, you know, these, uh, the combat between us being ground based, I think it's going to be aerial, uh, um, uh, you know, aerial uh, confrontations in the near future. Something that has been happening for years, not lately, but the, uh, in the earlier years between Turkey and uh, Greece, you know, because they're uh, their uh, island territories are so close to each other that it's absolutely difficult I mean, and actually impossible to know hey, where are you, is this my territory or is this your territory. And they had in fact gone to such an extent that many a time you know, managed to have these interceptions, you know, they used to carry out uh, mock dog fights without firing. Both are loaded, both could, you know, shoot down one or the other, yet they used to do this. I hope this will not happen and I don't think we will let it happen. But I do believe that it is now the Air Force versus Air Force where they will want to show, uh, you know, who's got the upper hand. And it is important that all Marshall, this is doing. Major, that do you believe and making sure that, that the response the by the Pakistani the, uh, Air Force uh, are made good? The response by the Pakistani Air Force uh, in taking down an Indian Air Force fighter aircraft is an act of military escalation. The fact that we went and targeted terror camps, no civilian casualties, no military damage. We targeted a civilian, we, we targeted a terror camp. They've taken down a military uh, aircraft of the Indian Air Force. Do you think this is an act of escalation, Air Chief Marshal Major? Uh, Rahul, yes, our intent 
was not to engage a military target or uh, hurt civilian population, but to go and hit a terrorist camp, which we did very successfully and very effectively. Now, the Pakistani Air Force engaging in a dogfight with ours and shooting down one of our aircraft, and we shot down one of them, uh, tantamounts to military action. There is no doubt about it. But uh, before I go further, in lighter vein, let me say that after the terrorist camp was hit by us, I think Imran Khan should have very gracefully thanked us that what Pakistan and he couldn't do for decades, we did it in 21 minutes. Actually, he should have been thankful to us <laughs> instead of launching this uh, uh, counter uh, strike uh, on us. Where do you think we are going next? Because it's very clear from the response that we've seen from the Indian government that there is no question of de-escalation. They're not looking at scaling back. In fact, they're holding firm and the message that's been put out is that the Indian people must stand resolute that when there is a bout, there is a duel, you throw punches, you take punches, but there is no question of bowing down. I think Air Chief Marshal Tipness, that's the critical word going out. I spoke to Air Chief Marshal Krishnaswamy uh, this afternoon. He said, you cannot allow the national resolve to crumble. India must stay united as one. Correct. Absolutely. Absolutely echo the sentiments, no doubt on that at all. Uh, do you want me to continue? Yeah, yes, Air Chief Marshal Tipnis, I want to understand from you, what's, you your sense, response from me? what's your sense of what happens from here on, sir? Well, I would say that this, that I intend to make sure that we prevent uh, these terrorist groups to continue their effectiveness against any targets anywhere in Kashmir or any parts of India. And I'm sure they are probably looking for softer targets like urban areas, you know, places where a lot of traffic, um, uh, there's a lot of population uh, density. And uh, what they did in uh, uh, Bombay, Mumbai uh, a few years ago, or in Pathankot, so they will want to do something because they have been hurt. And I'm sure they want to take, as we say, revenge. Our intent, of course, is to make sure we do everything possible to prevent them from doing it. Now, <clears throat> when Imran Khan, the Prime Minister of Pakistan says that come and let's talk, there is no question. I don't think we will bow down to his, uh, 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 to his initiative unless, unless, uh, as I said earlier, that they take action against this terrorist. And if they don't, I don't think this attack that we did last, uh, uh, yesterday, uh, pre-dawn attack that we did, uh, was the, you know, one of, uh, action from our side. If the Pakistanis don't take action against this terrorist, then I think we will continue doing so because our resolve must not waver. I think that's a very critical point Air Chief Marshal Tipness makes that you can't strike and then let the uh, opponent take the advantage. Now that you've struck, you must keep up the pressure. Hold firm, Air Chief Marshal Tipness, because you know a lot of people looking at those disturbing pictures of an Indian Air Force pilot in the custody of the Pakistani army saying, you know, this is terrible news. I think the word going out from all air warriors is you're prepared for such circumstances when you join the Air Force. And you even the pilot who's been taken captive would want the Indian National Resolve to hold firm. Air Chief Marshal Major. Absolutely. No doubt on Absolutely. that. Absolutely. There is no doubt. And I'm sure... Air Chief Marshal Major, please go on, sir. Yeah, I, w I was saying that, uh, th that there is absolutely no doubt that this spirit will be maintained. As a matter of fact, that's our bread and butter. And that's what every air warrior is trained for. And uh, as a matter of fact, today I'm sure the younger lot uh, in squadrons must be saying, let, come on, let, let, let's, let's, let's do a lot more than what we did yesterday and today. That would be their spirit. Okay. Ambassador Parthasarthi, we're hearing from two very distinguished former air chiefs. What's the role diplomats play in the current circumstances? Pakistan offering a fig leaf of talks. We've seen Musharraf under pressure claim that terror infrastructure would be dismantled on Pakistani soil. Nothing came of it.
Can we believe the Pakistanis? Well, between 2004 and 2007, Musharraf was under huge pressure and he did uh, uh, at least pretend to be doing it and we didn't have terrorist strikes in that period. Uh, but uh, the fact of the matter is that right now you have a, a prime minister who is a creature of the military. Uh, okay, he makes an offer. But I think uh, there are ways to convey to him that uh, fine, uh, but uh, firstly, uh, we, uh, we want the terrorist infrastructure dismantled. No, and we want these terrorists. Give us Hafiz Saeed, give us Maulana Masood Azam. Precis precis precisely, but at least to start with, the complete dismantling of that uh, infrastructure of terrorism, which is visible, not just uh, sort of the covert as you say, and um, uh, 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 but that is clearly a prelude to getting them tried, because you know uh, this um, the person who was involved in uh, that IC eight one four hijacking and was Masur Azhar's brother-in-law, who appears to have been hit in the strike, and who was in charge of the Balakot uh, exactly, terror camp. Exactly. So you know, uh, let's not repeat those those mistakes of surrendering to this sort of pressure. Uh, we, uh, there are, as I said, ways of communicating with Pakistan without getting into an, the sort of uh, formats uh, which are official and formal and so on and so forth. But the message has to be very clear that we will continue to squeeze you as, and make you bankrupt. And where you're isolating yourself in the entire region, we will add to that process. I want to go across to Gaurav Savant, who's joining us from uh, Srinagar. Gaurav, what reports are you picking up from the line of control? We're being told that even now, uh, there are several sectors of the line of control where exchange of fire is being reported. Rahul, the line of control remains hot, remains tense. Uh, it usually picks up uh, in the third quarter of the night uh, because that is where the adversary is least prepared uh, uh, for action. So that is what sources are also telling me that in case there's a ceasefire violation by Pakistan, it will be responded to and with interest. That's the point that they're making. Uh, Rahul, in the past, Pakistan has used anti-tank guided missiles to target our permanent defenses, our posts. Uh, the Indian Army is paying back in coin. There are some intercepts from across the line of control uh, which are being reported uh, the, you know, in the Pakistani media uh, rather fatally. So what is the Pakistani media saying? Uh, and and official, uh, you know, their army officials, they've had five fatal casualties. They've had 15 non-fatal casualties in one sector and they're apprehending a bigger strike. So they're vacating some of the villages along the line of control. So that is what is happening on the other side of the line of control. Adequate precautions are also being taken on this side of the line of of control uh, where Pakistan shows its desperation is when it opens up north of Pir Panjal uh, in the Uri sector which is what it did last night which is where uh, perhaps Pakistan once again will uh, you know went out its frust frustration and that is where some people on even on this side have been asked to move to safer areas at a short notice should the need arise okay we're going to take a very quick break we have a lot more coming in on a day when Pakistani lies unraveling one after another Remember, the Pakistan Minister for Human Rights complained to the High Commissioner for Human Rights about the loss of lives caused by the Indian aerial attack inside Pakistan. This when the Pakistani army had come out and said that we only hit a jungle, we brought down some trees. So how can there be loss of lives if only trees were hit? Secondly, uh, the official spokesperson of the Pakistani army claimed on his Twitter handle and in a press conference that two Indian Air Force jets had been taken down. Now they're saying that there's only one fighter aircraft that came down. The second fighter aircraft that went down was a Pakistani fighter aircraft. They're not willing to accept that. Our coverage continues on the other side of a quick break. Stay with us. Thanks for watching the video. For more such news and updates, please like, share, and subscribe to India Today. Also, check out our other great videos from our channel. We know you would love to.